What is going on guys, it's CG here. So patch 239 has just been released, and with it, a whole bunch of new features. In today's video, I'll be covering the two new dinos, the Daibe and the Manta, along with the Chemistry Bench and Primitive Cannon. First up, we have the two new dinos, the Manta and the Daibe. The Daibe is a territorial omnivore, ignoring most non-hostile creatures and having the ability to eat both meat and plants. The official name for this creature is the Arctus Dyrus. However, its name was later changed due to its enormity and territorial nature, furthermore having an easier to pronounce name. The Dire Bear makes for a fairly easy tame, as it is capable to be tamed off of both food types. The saddle is unlocked by reaching level 35. The cost of the saddle consists of 300 hide, 130 fiber, and 100 cementing paste. A wild dire bear's speed is so fast that they will most likely outrun you in most situations. However, if you have a fair amount of movement points skilled, you may stand a chance of survival. Once tamed, the dire bear is a strong and reliable mount. It can sprint for extremely long, if not infinite periods of time. Due to its weight capabilities, it has the base weight at level 1 being 650, and from here on can be skilled to hold a very large amount of items giving you another reason to why you should tame such a beast. The Manta Mobula, or Manta for short, is a defensive carnivore, feeding off the island's abundancy of plankton. Being one of the smallest ocean creatures on the island does not mean you should underestimate its force. The Manta is the deadliest of all small ocean mounts and can be ridden bareback. However, you will still need a saddle which can be obtained by reaching level 25. In order to craft the saddle, you will need 100 hide, 70 fiber, 25 wood, 35 metal ingots, and 12 flint. Being an extremely fast mount, the Manta also has the capabilities to pierce through one's armor and briefly leap out of the water. This gives you a huge advantage when you need to avoid danger, furthermore giving you another reason to why you should tame such a creature. Structure-wise, we have the new chemistry table and primitive cannon, which have been added into the game. Like most siege weapons, the price is fairly high, However, the new primitive cannon is the most costly of all. Costing you a small amount of metal, 950 to be exact, the cannon does create a huge headache for those of you that struggle to obtain such resources. The other cost requirements consist of 200 fibre, 150 hide, 120 thatch and 300 cementing paste. The ammunition it requires is cannonballs. They cost 65 metal, 30 gunpowder and 15 cementing paste. That being said, the cannon definitely makes up for its cost by dealing almost 4,000 damage a hit on stone structures. Alright guys, so I've jumped onto my game here to give you a bit of gameplay of the two new dinos that have been added along with the two new structures, the cannon which is over there on their HMS floaty cardboard and this lovely new chemistry bench which is on my little thatch platform here. So first off, I'm just going to go straight and talk about this diabet. This thing is absolutely amazing. So it is, well, when I tamed this thing, it was level 3. I did force tame it and spawn it in, but it has all the same stats. I haven't skilled, I haven't like cheated on any XP to skill it or anything. It's got all default stats. It had 650 base weight at level 3. I've upgraded the weight run once and it's at 676 now. But I want, this thing has a cool few things to show you. So... If you press C, it does stand up and do some little roar type thing. And with the movement, which I did state earlier, as you can see, it starts off slow, but the longer you run, it gets faster and faster, and just carries on getting <laughs> just carries on getting a lot faster. And as you can see, it can turn at some very very sharp corners, just like drifting in all the sand down here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I really do like the turning speed. I like how much weight it can have and the speed on this all together is really good. If you right click it has some sort of like claw attack and left click it just bites. Um, I'm assuming right click is going to do more damage because normally that's the special attack they have, uses more stamina and does more damage. And then there's also C just to do some little, you know, show off to your friends or something like that. This doesn't have any effect on any dinos. So this thing is an omnivore, as I did state earlier, it eats berries and meat, so it's going to be a lot easier to tame. It's all fluffy like all the other mammals on the islands, which is really cool. Just look at its cute face. 
Um, moving on to the Manta actually. The Manta is very, very interesting. So, this is what this little creature down here looks like. And it says I can scale it. It's been sitting here for a bit, so skill health. And let's jump aboard. Alright, so the Manta is actually quite fast. As you can see, see how fast it moves through water. And it can also jump very far. <laughs> so it's definitely good at getting away. Oh, as you can see there, when I jumped on land, it was kind of like, I'll show you again now, but first, oh wait, do I have any special attacks? Uh, when I hold C, it just seems to go down towards the bottom of the ocean. C, space, oh okay, that's just to elevate and descend. Left click attack is the stabbing of its tail, which can pierce armor. It's pretty cool, let's test on this pole here. I can turn around. Oh, one more hit. There you go, coal's dead. Ooh. I've noticed that coal in the game, actually, I didn't notice this before, but they actually changed size. As you see, it says 1.4 times. I actually never knew that. I thought it was a mod on the server we were playing, but I'm playing the default game now, and it's actually in it. Unless I've still got a mod installed, I'm not too sure. But anyway, like I was saying earlier, as this thing can leap out of the water, you can also get it on land. However, it's really weird when it gets on land, I'll show you now. You can get it on land, but. Instead of dying straight away, it just takes loads of damage and then until you get back into the water. So it gives you, you know, a good five seconds or so to quickly rush back in the water. However, if you do stay up there, it does die, which I don't really want to do. I don't want to kill this guy. I've already done it before. I'd rather not do it again. Because oh, this is my favourite one so far. It's more than a few. The colour schemes on these are really cool. You get like some dark blue ones with green on them and everything is really good. Right, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. So, chemistry bench. Now, the chemistry bench is quite expensive. Let me jump in here. Structures, crafting, okay, here it is. So, chemistry bench requires 250 metal ingots, 250 cementing paste, 100 spark powder, 100, uh, not 100, 250 crystal, 250 polymer, and 250 electronics. Now, once placed, this thing does require electricity, and it also requires gasoline to be in there uh, for it to actually work. So, first, I need to turn on the generator to actually get some power running to this thing. And now I'm going to turn it on. It has its own engine and everything, which is pretty cool. We've got like a little Bunsen burner thing burning away that potion. Pretty cool. Now I want to see how fast this thing crafts. Uh, this basically works like a mortar and pestle, although it's electric, it's a lot more efficient. So let's see how quickly it crafts. Turns 24. Oh, craft 24. It turns 100 flint and 100 stone into spark powder. Whoa, that is very good. Now normally the mortar and pestle that would take about two minutes to go through that maybe a little bit longer and it did that in about five seconds that's how quick it was so that is definitely a pro an improvement and definitely worth getting well especially if you're higher up in the game you have like all the best stuff, all the best gear and everything if you're a, at a kind of low level i don't really think it's worth it you're better off just putting down four or five more pestles like i've got a bunch here to craft your stuff up quick uh, I did just talk about the cannon earlier, but I'll quickly go back over it again. Weapons, ammo, so there's the cannonball, it requires 64, 65 metal, 30 gunpowder, and 15 cement and paste. Craft another one of those, or I've got one in my inventory. Um, where is it? Where is it now? Here it is, cannon, all that stuff, a lot of stuff you need for it. It's pretty mad. But let's test it out anyway. So. You can put it on rafts, which is good. The HMS floaty cardboard here has it mounted on it. Uh, the way you actually aim this thing is very strange. It's not like any of the other siege weapons, like a ballista or catapult. You have to actually go up to it, hold E, and there's aim down. It's like you're moving gears, so you can aim up. Uh, what have got? Aim left, aim right. Just keep aiming up, and then aim down again. Aim right a bit more, let's aim down a bit more. Actually, the same up a bit. There we go. And you actually need two people to man this because if you access its inventory, it gets one slot. Which, if you remember, 
uh, on the ballista and the catapult, you get about a small chest's worth of inventory space, roughly. On this, you only get one slot, so I'd imagine you'd have one of your tribe mates here loading it, and then one of you would be firing it, or you can just have one guy just throw in a shell and I quickly spam E to fire it. Now I'm going to fire at this wall here, and it approximately does 4,000 damage. I did calculate it earlier, it was, it was exactly 3,750 odd, I think. But here we go. Ooh, I just love the noise it makes, so good. Right, so I think I'm going to need a fly to get up here. Let's quickly cheat to fly, and there you go. So the base, the, uh, base health of the stone wall is 10k, and it's at 6,248, so it did what? 3,752 damage, I think, if I am correct, I'm not too sure, I'm not the best at maths in the world, but anyway, um, I think that's about right. Now, this thing, which I'm going to love to bits once I get one on my server I play on, is going to be amazing. So, you could just imagine, say, you have a pretty good built-up raft, you can make it into a pirate ship, have a row of these, have like five or six tribe mates on it, and then you can literally just have a massive raft war. So these rafts have, I did check before, let me see if I can now. Yeah, rafts have 20,000 health. So it would actually take five cannonballs to take out a raft. However, if you're attacking someone with a raft that's been built on, if you want to sink it with five shells, you have to actually hit the proper wood part here, or in my case, the cardboard part, because that's literally what it looks like without a sail. It's a floating piece of cardboard, but yeah, with buildings on it, you're most likely going to hit the structures and it's not going to sink it that quickly. I'm going to quickly stick in a few more shells and take out this wall over here. It's going to be pretty cool. Let's quickly load these in. Fire. Oh, let's do that again. Oh, well, that is cool. I'm wondering, because there's a Bronto over there, if I quickly craft up a bunch more shells, I might be able to go and do something about that. Actually, this will be enough, I think. So, they do 4,000 damage a shot, roughly, four of these. That's about 16k damage, and a stock, well, a wild level Bronto does not have 16,000 health. I don't know if it's different to health for what it is with damage, but let's take a look see what this thing can do on dinos. I'm hoping it's going to one-shot this Bronto now, because it'll be very effective at taking down alphas. If you can kind of like get them stuck somewhere, and you can like just keep shooting them, although it's a very expensive way of killing them. But then you could save the life of your Rex or Giga. Alright, let's see what happens. We're going to need to aim this. What? Left. A bunch. Maybe up a bit. Or... Oh, that's a bit too much. It's not at all. Aim down. I say more left. It's making its way that way. And let's quickly fire. Stick in a shell and fire. Oh! Level 9 Bronto. Went straight through it. One shot at it. Did 4,000 damage. So, yeah, the same damage that it does to a building it applies to dinos. It's like Kano over there. Targeted me. Let's see if I'm any good at aiming this thing. See if I can sort out that car now. Alright, let's see what we can do. Stick that in. Oh, he's coming. So I miss. Oh, oh, it's charging me. I know it's eating the Brontos. It's okay, it's eating the Brontos. It's good. We got a bit of time. If I aim down a bit, it's gonna be coming over here. Oh, yes! I got it! Level 2, I wasn't even actually supposed to fire then, I was going to turn left again, but yeah, I got it. Pretty good. This cannon I'm definitely going to fall in love with, especially on servers. It's going to be so good. Just going to shoot one of these into space. See how high this can aim. Alright, that's the max it can aim. Yeah, if you ever get good at aiming these things, you can definitely use this as an artillery piece. You could probably put a raft on the shore of some base you're raiding and shoot a few of these shells over if you have enough resources to build that many. It is quite expensive but it's a lot of fun and it's going to be a very efficient way of raiding now. Because ballistas don't do that much damage and gigas are pretty useless at destroying stone so this thing is going to be 
pretty good. Pretty damn good. Player and Dino levels have also been raised by two levels, giving you those little bit extra engram points which may help you obtain the new equipment. The patch notes also stated that 4K texture support would have been added, however it has been delayed to a later update as it needs much more time in development. Tribe member rankings and breeding mechanics phase 2 were also delayed as they are not yet ready for deployment. Last but not least, the Broodmother boss arenas have been added along with a range of bug fixes and server improvements. Anyway guys, that's it for this video, just want to thank you all so much for watching. Please show your support on these videos by smashing that like button, and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe for more ARK Survival Evolved content.